Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Bray. I'm so excited to be here today with Keisha McDonald for the Emergency Home Learning Summit. And what's really cool is I'm in California and Keisha is in the Big Island in Hawaii. Is that right? Yep, the Big Island, the island of Hawaii. <laughs> and what when we saw the summit, uh, we said, we have to do this. And Keisha came up with uh, three points that we're going to talk about. So managing expectations, balancing priorities, and advocating, I didn't write it right, but it's advocate for self and child during these uncertain times. I'm excited about this, Keisha. What about you? It's always exciting to uh, sit and talk to you, Barbara. I, I know, and well, before we move on, I just wanna say, why did we do this? What, what was the reason why we wanted to cover these, these uh, ideas? I think, you know, there's so much out there right now. There are so many resources. There are so many pointers. There's so many tips. Um, and I feel, you know, that we need to learn to kind of create a funnel for ourselves. And so for me, you know, breaking it down into kind of thinking about those, maybe our, you know, like you always talk about your why, let's get down to our why, our larger ideas, our larger concepts, and just kind of maybe reconsider and reposition where we are with ourselves, with our kids, with our educational uh, choices, because, you know, I think it's going to help us to funnel there's so much noise out there. There's so many issues. There's so many stimuluses and inputs right now. And I think, you know, to, to do the, the best things for our, our kids, we really need to, to sit and focus and just kind of reconsider the path we're on and, and where we want to go with this. And it's not that easy. We both know that. Um, we put together a document um, and I have that link on the bottom there and I'll make sure that that people can access it because it, it also how to contact Keisha and myself if you have any questions. So I'm going to go to the next slide, which let me just move me and you for a minute so everybody can see us. This is a worldwide pandemic. This is scary. We've never gone through anything like this. It's been over 100 years since there was something that it impacted everybody. Uh, I mean, we had wor world wars and whatever, but nothing like this. And we've never been prepared for it. Teachers aren't prepared for it. And they're going through so much. Parents, I don't know how you're doing it. And that's why when uh, Steve reached out to me, I said, I got to talk to Keisha. I got to talk to, and there's a reason, Keisha, uh, when we go through our, you know, some of these points, I'd like you to explain why, you know, I went, you know, wanted you to talk about it because some of the, we, we actually did a reflection about some of these ideas. Yeah. Well, I am a parent and a teacher um, and I am very close to my kids. And so I feel like I do have a good balance of perspectives, but also I am, a, I've always been an advocate of mental health, of emotional wellness. Um, I've never felt like it's a priority enough. And I mm -hmm. feel like COVID is really exposing, you know, how much we really, it is really the basis of everything else we do together um, as parents, as students, as teachers, we really need to keep that as, as part of our focus. It's not just about uh, the quadrilateral equations or, you know, learning their letters. Um, we have to help each other just be human in this time. And so I'm a big advocate of, of knowing where we are with our relationships with each other and with education and how to move forward together. Now you know why I asked her, everybody. Okay, so let's go on to our first uh, idea. You, can, you shared this, so I want you to tell us why you shared that with me. I think, you know, we do tend to just get into our patterns. You know, you have your, if you're a parent, you have your job or you're at home or whatever you're doing. And, and we do sometimes take things for granted. And sometimes some of, I think now, you know, the simple thing of getting together and having coffee with a friend, um, you know, the simple thing of being able to go to your mom's house on her birthday. There's so many things that, that I think we really did take for granted. And this has really just underscored um, our need for each other, our need to really 
celebrate mm -hmm. um, how wonderful things are when they're going well. And now that we have these other complications, you know, we're all kind of like, wow, that was a special time in life. And when are we going to get those times back? So I well, think yeah. I don't want to talk about a new normal. I don't believe I in was just going to say that. that. <laughs> I don't believe, I don't like that terminology. I don't want to talk about a new normal, but I do want to just mm -hmm. recognize, to just take a moment and recognize, as you said, we weren't prepared for this and we didn't see it coming. Our life was a certain way and it's different now. And even though I don't want to talk about a new normal, I just do want to stop and kind of honor, you know, our lives and what they were and, and what they can be again. And then how do we, how do we, how do we build the best bridge right now between um, then and what's ahead of us? Oh, that's so beautiful. I was going to say something about the new normal because people are talking like that and there is not going to be any, we don't even know what that is. So, or we'll ever know. Right. Okay, this is so, our normal. What, yeah, right now, right now. Right. So, so let's just go in. I'm going to uh, introduce this and then we'll talk about it. The first thing that uh, that we talked about was our expectations. And we, we actually just said, you just said something about what is the most important things right now, what's important. And maybe what I want to talk about is having unrealistic expectations for ourselves, for our kids, um, and what that means. So uh, what is your ideas of this? Well, first of all, I think it's, it's hard not to, right? Our fallback position is to, I mean, if I have a freshman who's going off to college, my expectation is for them to be, you know, have that freshman experience and live in the dorms. And, or if I have a child who's going into kindergarten, you know, you want them to have those moments of, of meeting their teacher at the door and playing, you know, in the sandbox with the others. And, um, you know, I, I, people who have a senior in high school right now, they want them to have those, what we would consider that are normal, um, they want them prom and, and a regular graduation. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we have to just accept it is different, it looks different. You know, how do we still celebrate what we can do, but to just manage that idea of what, again, what is normal or what we can expect, um, what is possible right now and how does success look different? How do those experiences look different? How do we still make the most of them and do the best we can without, you know, this constant kind of nostalgic, you know, like, oh, if only they could do it this way or back in my day when I was a college freshman, this is how it was for me. That doesn't mm -hmm. help anyone right now. So again, how do we manage what we are can do for health and safety reasons and for our best emotional and mental selves? And how do we move forward to finding success under these circumstances? So um, one of the, you know, the acronym for FEAR, F-E-A-R, is false expectations appearing real. And what happens is, you know, we want the, the old me, the old time, you know, the old normal, whatever, they, to be here. But what we can do is... Um, be realistic about what we can do and what our children can do. That I think what I've heard from some children, because I've been trying to reach out to teachers and children and, and students is that they're expected to do the same thing they did face to face. And I think that it's impossible to do that for some, in many kids. And so I think that's the thing is let's be realistic on what you can do as a parent and what your kids can do and celebrate success anytime. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, um, you know, I, again, I'm a teacher and, and ideally we have that, we have that triangle, right? We have our, our triangle, we have our parent, we have our teacher, we have our student are all working together to create success. And, but I, I get, you know, when people think of a triangle, they think of a tripod or a three-legged stool and they think, well, if one, um, you know, maybe the whole thing is going to topple. And I don't see education like that. I see it more like a three-legged race, you know, the three-legged <laughs> race where there's two people and you tie the leg together in the middle because 
I've seen success come when maybe a student is like a little bit weaker or has some problems and that parent and that teacher, they work together and they say, I'm going to do this on the school front. I'm going to do this on the home front. And, and they support that child and the success is real. I've seen oh. when a teacher, um, you know, has maternity leave and suddenly there's a substitute in the room or maybe there's a first year, te- maybe the teacher's a little bit of a weaker point. And I've seen that student be like, you know what, I want to learn. I'm hungry. I'm curious. And the parents support that child at home. And I've seen that student be successful. And again, for a parent point of view, maybe you're working really hard right now. Maybe your spouse lost their job and you're a one income family. Maybe you're nursing a sick relative. There's lots of things, but you know, if you are finding a good educational opportunity, opportunity. If you're working with that teacher to support your student, if your student is hungry to learn, even if you feel like you're the weak link, it doesn't mean you are, and you can still create success, you know? So I think managing your expectations, knowing what you're capable of as a parent, what you can contribute to that triangle and just be real about it. And then get the other two on board, get them to lash their legs together. And you're the guy (laughs) in the middle, you know? And I, I really think we can create success in many different ways and it can look differently in different situations. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. I like the analogy. I can just see it, you know, what you're saying with the three-legged race. <laughs> but that, that is great. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Balancing priorities. This is, I've had parents say, this has been just too much. They think that they're responsible for the teaching, but then they say to the teacher, this is your job. And the teacher says, well, I need your help. And the kids are saying, I'm being pulled in every direction. Wow, this is, how do you do it all? Well, again, this feeds per- perfectly into what we're saying about expectations, right? If I think if, if, if everyone sits down and they're just very real <clears throat> about what they can do and, and how they're going to balance that kind of that triangle or balance the work um, and me talking to teachers, I try to get, you know, what are your priority standards? For example, you really can't teach it all. If you're online, you can maybe expect to cover half to two thirds of what you would do in a classroom. Let's prioritize what's most important. What do they need to know moving on? You know, what can we really reinforce? Um, And so from a a teacher point of view, we have to pick those priorities. Um, As a parent, you know, I see parents again, do I send my child to school? Do I keep them home? Um, You know, depending on your own personal like work and life situation, is your priority health and safety is your priority that you have, you live in a three generation home and, and you want your child at home because you're scared to bring the virus home, for example. You know, there's, I think finding, really defining your priorities is that first step, that first step. And then once you figure out what are your top priorities, you know, slotting them in, in a very particular order so that we accomplish that we still can do the things that we want to do and, and in a safe way and in a way that's comfortable for everybody. I love what you said here about the pri- kind of determining the priorities, but I, what I hear the ones that are the most ses- successful is when they actually talk about it with everybody. They're not making the decisions on their own. So especially a family and, and the stress they're under is just amazing. So if they can make those discussions part of, you know, say, we're going to talk about how we can balance these together. And when the child says, you know, my priority is I have a math paper or something that I need to do and I don't understand it, but I'm all, you know, worried about it. And I, the teacher's so busy, you know, how can we all listen more to each other's concerns? And that helps. That really helps for me. Um, I had no idea with my own family that I was working so much. They wanted, they said, can't you just give us some time? And I went, oh, hmm." I didn't know I wasn't. And so we do need to listen more and uh, be there for each other. Well, and like you say, normal, we talk about the new normal or not the new normal. Normalize those discussions. 
right? Don't just assume it's happening. Don't just assume, okay, I'm working really hard. So the teacher is going to take care of that right now. Don't just assume like, oh, my child understands how important it is to be in school right now. You know, normalize those discussions, have those discussions. And then once you, again, build that triangle to the place where everyone is kind of, because no one's at their best right now. No one's hundred percent right now. Yeah. So again, how are we going to distribute those responsibilities? How are we going to distribute those priorities? Mm -hmm. And the more we normalize those discussions, the more likely we are of success, like having a learning target. Yeah. We're going to be more successful if we talk about it, if we make a plan and if we work together to make those priorities happen. Oh, I love this. I'm really excited about what we're saying because now I, I'm going to listen more <laughs> and, and, and talk to my family, even though I, I think I'm doing it. I bet you because of the worry we have, we might not be. Okay. So we're going to go on. I love our talk. This is so <laughs> cool. Okay. The idea of advocating for ourselves. Some people feel funny about doing that. And we even need our child to advocate advocate for themselves. And a lot of times they don't know how to do that. They follow orders. They do whatever someone asks them to do, but you put in these questions and I think I'd like you to talk about those. Well, again, I think, um, we are used to being in whatever we were in. So whether you were homeschooling or whether you were child's in public school or private, you know, whatever you were doing, I think we're just used to that being the pattern or the rhythm. And, you know, in this day and age, when we, our circumstances are all so different, I think it's possible to step outside those roles, those norms and those boxes and to search for a better solution. So for example, you know, working at a public school and um, we are providing the full distance learning for families who aren't comfortable sending their children to school. I've had a parent phone me and say, look, you know, I work all day. I have multiple children. I have a special needs child. Um, I really can't help my child until between five and seven at night. You know, wow. can we work together? Like, what can we do? And, and to me, that was, it was great. You know, he's just telling me what he needs. He's telling me to best help, how to best help him and his child to succeed. And I was, you know, we're willing to work with parents. And so as a parent, again, if you're trying to do the impossible, don't try to do the impossible, you know, you can't do it all. And so if you are working, you know, certain hours that are inflexible, if you have certain situations, you know, work with your educator, tell them what's going on, ask for, can we change the due dates a little bit? Can we, you know, schedule a check-in at a different time? You know, what alternative arrangements can we make? And again, if you're comfortable going to your boss, and saying, you know, can I have different, you know, I just feel like the parent can start with that, that advocating for themselves to try to not do it all, to try to not make it impossible, but to make it possible. Um, and then to hopefully teach their child to advocate. So whether you're sitting in on a class, like, you know, if so I'm thinking the younger grades, especially that kindergarten first, second grade, you know, if you can take a day off work or if you can arrange to sit in class with your child and see how the rhythm of the class is, and you know your child, is your child not speaking when normally they would? Is your child not participating? You know, and maybe observe and then talk to your child. Like, how can, you know, are you comfortable asking your teacher a question on Zoom? You know, are you not comfortable? Like, what can we do to change that for you? And then talking to the teacher about that. I just feel like we need to, yeah, we need to say what we need at this point in time, because there are so many conflicting mm -hmm. things going on. And if we're going to get this education thing to work, it has to work for everybody. And so, you know, mm -hmm. modeling that advocacy and hopefully showing your child how to advocate for themselves, I think could be a huge important piece to this. I do know that there are some cultures where that's not, they're not comfortable, even talking to the teacher. Uh, and, and then children aren't real comfortable going to their parents to say, I don't get it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that there, you know, that when you talked about the triad and the, I wonder how you can build that culture. So people feel, um, even beyond their cultural backgrounds and everything that they can reach out. Maybe there could be some ideas that the teachers can do by checking in, having office hours. Um, 
but I'm just wondering what we can say for those that have a culture that's a little different, so. Well, I always say by any means possible, you know, when we talk about family um, and, and communication, for example, you know, the school has so much to, to communicate and it's really hard. So you'll have a newsletter, you know, you'll have the website, you'll have emails, you'll have text messengers, you'll mm -hmm. have, you know, letters that go home physically in the mail, you'll have drive throughs I just, I know that when we're dealing with our families who come from different cultural backgrounds, you know, there's no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I just feel like we need to create as many, just in the classroom, we talk about opportunities to respond, right? Like you do a choral response, you have children raise their hand, you have children hold up a card of a different color. You have to provide families also with a multiple opportunities to respond mm -hmm. because there, there's so many different ways to connect. And it, we would just have to keep trying until we find the one that works and that, yeah. you know, we can really have those conversations about this is how we're going to work together. This is how we're going to support our children. You know, your child, my child, like we're all working together for the same purpose. And how do we best do that? Well, I know that some parents are doing learning pods and looking at because they some have to work and others can actually if they are safe, they can actually uh, develop a, a system where uh, families can actually work together. And so um, maybe down the road, what we could do, I, I, what I was thinking in our handout that we have, we can put some tips in there for parents. And so we'll keep building on that. But um, the other is that self-care, which was the last question. I think that it would be really nice to know what families are doing for self-care. Because I think some parents aren't aware that they're, if they're not doing well, it impacts the, their child. And if they are not doing well, they may not feel good about asking for help. You see? Absolutely right. You know, again, nobody, there are a lot of people, myself included, <laughs> I hate asking for help. It's really <laughs> difficult to get to that point, you know, mm -hmm. and again, I would just urge parents, self-care, of course, balance, you know, like shut everything off and go for a walk with a family, you know, a learning walk, I, you know, where you're looking at the birds in your area, you're looking at what trees are in bloom right now, yeah. you know, you're smelling things, you're, you're looking around you, but you cook in the kitchen together and have fun, you know, make it even, you can do some math in there, double the recipe or, <laughs> uh, you know, ask uh, your child's opinion on, should I use more cinnamon or nutmeg in this recipe? You know, there's so many things and you, and we do need to take the time to do that. Um, absolutely. And that's, you can also make it learning and you can make it fun. And then also, as you said, in the very beginning, you know, these are just unprecedented times. It's okay to ask for help. Like everybody needs help. Everybody, mm -hmm. there's not one single person that has been through this. There is no handbook out there of how to, how to ace life in a pandemic. <laughs> you know, there's no perfection. And again, anything we can do to support our kids, that's the bottom line. It's not about you. Just like as a teacher, as a teacher, it's hard to ask for help to say, I don't know how to do something. It's not about you. You have to get out of the way. You know, you, you it's about the kids and it's about their learning. It's about their health, their safety Aww. and that. And so no matter what, you've got to do it. You have to ask for help. You have to help each other. I love your point about the pods. I, that's a huge advocacy piece. What are you advocating for? Are you in homeschool? Are you in private school? Are you in public school? Are you doing learning pods? I mean, that's advocacy right there, figuring out what educational platform or system is going to work best for your student. That is like the prime piece of advocacy right there. So I love that people are rethinking learning. I love that people are, are considering alternatives that they possibly never uh, considered. And I, again, I think we're going to see some really amazing successes in this period. Oh, thank you. Well, that leads to the next that I put up. Um, I, Basil Marin said this is that some of us are so into doing the work and not realizing that work is getting in the way of the heart work. And the heart work is really listening, really caring, really reaching out to others. And when I saw this graphic, I said, I just need to share it here because it just seemed to fit with what we just, what you just said. What do you, do you like this graphic also in that? Of course, because yeah. One of my biggest problems with this pandemic right now is this fear 
the fear sometimes that we see of, you know, like being together. Oh, it's too dangerous. It's too scary to be together. I love this graphic with the, the, the adult looking at the child and, and all, they just see the heart. You know, um, how are we going to work together on what's important? How are we going to work together again to beat this thing? Let's work together mm -hmm. against it versus letting it divide us. Um, and so I love, you know, again, is your child going to remember a report card score during this time? Or are they going to remember feeling loved and cared for? And I think mm -hmm. for teachers, it's important to remember that. And for parents too. And that's, again, part of that managing expectations piece. Oh, okay <laughs> that leads us to your last what you j shared last with me so why don't you tell us about this I saw this and it just absolutely struck me um and again <clears throat> as we talked about the old normal we're used to I think having a very even if if you're progressive and you know your kids went to Montessori or you know you believe in learning pods or if you're providing alternative educational opportunities I think we still have a slightly traditional view of education of what it is what learning is and when I saw I saw this quote it just made me you know think about how much we're all learning every single day. You know, it isn't just in the pages of a book. It isn't just in the walls of a classroom or um, in, inside of a Zoom call. Um, our kids are learning. They're learning from watching us. They're learning from watching us, again, balance our lives, take care of ourselves, prioritize our health and safety. They're, they're watching and they're learning. Um, and so <laughs> I, again, for the parents who maybe feel very distressed and it's valid. I'm not gonna invalidate your feelings. I have kids in school right now too. Do I sometimes worry? Are they learning enough? Are they gonna be ready to move on? Of course I do. But again, it's, it's just, they are still learning every single day by our example, by how we're handling the stress, by how we're managing our emotions, by how we're dealing with the world around us. You know, they're learning to tie their shoes. They're learning to be kind to a friend. They're learning to drive a car. You know, they're still learning every single day. And so rethinking again, this idea about education and learning um, and how it looks currently and what's important. And what's important is that they're safe and healthy and they're kind, loving human beings and that they are still learning every single day. I was going to. I mean, it's so beautiful. I just uh, want to end it there, but I was going to just say that um, every moment is a teachable moment if you open that door and maybe take a break. When you're stressed, take a break and breathe and be there with your child if they're having those same issues. And oh, Keisha, this was just beautiful i i hope parents this help you know they get a chance to watch this and 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 if they want to reach out to us um we have our uh you know we in fact i'll just go back to i think i can whoop uh at the bottom of the slides here there'll be um a resource and it'll also be on the summit. So let's all do the heart work before the hard work. Thank you so much for this beautiful, it was beautiful. Don't you think? <laughs> we, I, we, we always make magic. Oh, <laughs> no. I love it. You know, when you're talking about what's really important, you know, it's of course it's gonna end, end up, you know, beautiful because it is just, it's who we are. It's how we're moving forward together. Um, it's important stuff. So mm -hmm. it's good to, to, to talk about it. Like you said, normalize these discussions and, and, and what is that heart work? How are we doing it together? How are we going to be successful together? So thank you so much. And, uh, and for the beautiful music in the beginning. <laughs> so uh, mahalo. And aloha. Uh, aloha. <laughs> Bye, everyone.